Greetings, fellow citizens of Epcot. Ricky here, celebrating the 40th anniversary of Epcot. This is the reason why I had to come out to Florida. I was here last year for the 50th anniversary of the Magic Kingdom, and I immediately knew that I would have to return one year later to celebrate the park that I have fallen in love with so much. And let me tell you, I keep wondering, when am I not gonna come into Epcot, stand in front of Spaceship Earth, and just get choked up and feel those feelings? You know what? Why worry about it? Because I never ever want that feeling to end. Let's walk around and see, does Disney do better this year? And determine, has Walt's dream finally come true? Okay, do oh, the music, the soundtrack in this land. You know I'm a big music guy and they have just absolutely nailed the emotion with the BGM of this particular land in, inside of Epcot. The world's okay, soundtrack's okay, but up here, ooh, them's my jams. Just got hit with a, yeah, an unexpected round two of emotions. Just thinking about how far my life has come in the last year and where this project's gone, so. Thanks for being here with me. All right, what are we looking at on the floor over here? Okay, the floor over there, I have, this, this is all, don't hold me to this completely, but okay. this is, I believe, where Walt scribbled on a napkin one of his first visions of what Epcot Center would be. And that is the scribble down on the ground. They have blown it up, put it on the tile work. Pretty sure it was Walt, right? Yeah. yeah, and there's even the I-4, the little yellow. The I-4 corridor? Yeah. So I know it has something to do with a napkin, and I believe it was Walt that wrote it on there. Yep. Wow. Probably should have looked that up before I stated it for the internet to say, but... It's on YouTube. It's a fact now. It is, yeah. I looked it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> it's got to be true. <laughs> hey, friends, I'm currently backstage uh, in Epcot over at the pavilion next to England. I'm saying this all wrong. I'm not an Epcot guy. I don't know how to speak the language yet, but I will one day. The D23 event that we bought tickets for has coffee in there, juices, a full snack bar, exclusive photo ops. From the 50th, I was just bummed out that it felt like there was zero, zero acknowledgement of Magic Kingdom turning 50, which is such a monumentous occasion. So it was nice today that I've already seen a couple of construction photos. I've seen some memorabilia. I've actually seen them celebrating the history of Epcot, which is everything that I was so bummed out about that they didn't do last year. But yeah, it's very exciting to see them actually celebrating and acknowledging that, that this is an anniversary for a very epic park and already a vast, vast improvement from last year's non-celebration celebration. Shout out to Jeff on these cups. How many of these things have been printed, buddy? Favorite attraction inside of Epcot. 
but it's got to be high up there for me for just Disney attractions in general. I love the dark rides, but the storyline of seeing the evolution of technology, but also communication, being a lifelong designer and having having been a part of the early revolution of Apple computers, like just the whole thing is so emotional and then dropping down that that zone of stars. Like I just, I love the subject matter. I love what it's about. It's just amazing. And I was telling Adam, when I would watch YouTube videos, anytime somebody would go into Spaceship Earth, I'd immediately stop the video. I always wanted to ride it and have no idea what was going on in there. And it continues just to blow my mind. And it is something that I don't ride too often because I don't want to ruin how amazing it is. And I also just love the ride technology of how the scenes are far apart in the beginning because you're going up the sphere where it's the, the thickest part of the sphere. But also, as you get to the top of the cone of the sphere, the show scenes are tighter and tighter because history is moving faster and faster and faster. The storyline is tethered to the technology that makes the ride work. Perfect attraction. Even though I do know that it could use a little uh, sprucing up. Hey friends, I interrupt today's celebration of Epcot turning 40 to ask you if you could please consider subscribing to the channel. I promise you I will work really, really hard to keep you informed and entertained. It doesn't cost you anything but a good time. Please subscribe to the channel and go on these crazy adventures with me. I can't wait to have you become part of our family. Thank you for subscribing to Hey Bricky. Now, back to our celebration of Epcot turning 40. All right, so I am in a parade, <laughs> in a solid parade full of people. They're escorting us over to this presentation of 11. And what makes me excited about this is I kept anticipating on the 50th last year that there would be some sort of presentation or at least acknowledgement that there was, you know, an anniversary happening. So win or lose, no matter what this, presentation is at least it's something right and as a fan and particularly a fan that travels across the country you just you want something for your investment and time and effort and your energy and most importantly for me an investment in my emotions <laughs> so yeah don't know what's gonna happen but just excited that something is you remember when we were running up to the castle this day last year and we didn't know nothing was waiting for us there now we know now we know right this time there is something there's something at the end of the rainbow this time <laughs> so kind of one of the, the themes of today is line to the line there's been so many times to do something we've gone from line to line to line to get there but you know part part of the fun meeting lots of fun people in line and just excited that there's something to line up for because last year not going to be a broken record, but I'm, I, I'm clearly still kind of holding on to the 50th and just what a disappointment it was. I'm very excited that it seems this time we're doing something different. celebrates and actually this year's 51 years and uh, the, the group that performed or that, that was this group was formed from in Tucson used to perform out at Disneyland back in the mid 60s I guess so the our history goes back that far actually Israel and Steve flew on the walk on the, on the Mickey Mouse one from uh, Tucson over yeah. to, to Disneyland yeah, so. yeah. very very proud to 
be a part of the DC family for these wonderful years. And uh, here's to 40 more, right? Yeah! But Ali, I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the events of this past week. As representatives of cast members, more than 70,000 cast members, we understand that times are rough and hard, and so our hearts and our minds are with those who are in need and were affected by the storm. You know, Walt Disney envisioned a community of tomorrow when dreaming up Epcot. And one thing I've learned as a Disney cast member is that this community of today in Florida bonds together during times like this. We help each other, we give back, and we create brighter tomorrows during challenging times. So thank you so much to the fellow Floridians who assisted those who are recovering from the storm. We greatly appreciate you taking time to donate resources and to assess and assist with cleanups. We admire your compassion and your generous spirit of giving back, which make our community so much stronger. The incredible group that I have the honor and pleasure of introducing to you all now, no one's more iconic than Epcot's very own Voices of Liberty.
Epcot, our cast literally come from around the world to share their stories. They have forged international friendships for the past four decades. And I know that our guests have come to appreciate just how special that is. So whether this is your first visit here to Epcot, or you can't remember the number of times that you had the opportunity to travel around World Showcase, we are so grateful that you are here. And please know that you are welcome here at Epcot. And there is still so much more to celebrate as we move forward through this multi-year transformation. I mean, we've already introduced new neighborhoods that are going to connect us to one another and to our beautiful world. Like World Discovery, where we recently opened Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. And inside World Nature, we are working on Journey of Water, inspired by Moana, which is dedicated to understanding and preserving the beauty, the awe, and the balance of the natural world. And soon, guests will be able to see a new statue of Walt Disney at Dreamer's Point in World Celebration. Walt. A dreamer reminds us every single day of the magic of possibilities, that our dreams are not too big, and it is sure to inspire the dreamer in us all, and that is what Epcot is all about. Epcot's also about our incredible cast members and Imagineers, so I'd like to give a huge thank you and congratulations to all of those cast members and Imagineers who have made this incredible transformation possible. I'm here with Tampa J. Chris, who I just met. What's up, everyone? Jay, we were together last year on the 50th. 365 days ago, That's over right. at the Magic Kingdom for the 50th world, or 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World, of course. And uh, wh why did we wait this long? To, like, well, you know, there's, there's a little bit of space. 3,000 miles between yeah. us. That we, might do it. We have like a FIFO relationship. Every day I look at the sky and know that you're somewhere out there. But Me too. I'm like, oh, Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> that cloud. It's in the right spot. That cool. shitty red cloud in the sky <laughs> must be the bricky cloud but i digress a year later at least we saw them acknowledge the anniversary a complete right? 180 compared to the last year's ceremony yeah. for the same reason really yeah 40th 50th yeah walt disney world you know they they, they did a good job like you were you nailed it you said about the nostalgia and the I don't know if you did you did you just plug did you just plug your video inside of mine? Did I? That was not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, subscribe. Oh yeah. <laughs> but no, seriously, like it, it is like last year we just kept looking around at each other like they're not even going to acknowledge it. And yeah. it didn't need to be complicated, it just needed to be acknowledged. And I think all of us feel really, really happy now that, you know, they talked about the cast members, they talked about us, the guests, they talked about Walt, and they yeah. talked about, you know, the, the legacy of the park. And that, that's all you need. And yeah. also the current situation, everything going on here for the last sure, few days. Sure, sure. They did it. Yeah. They, they did their homework. They did it. And it, it, it just, seeing Walt up on that screen around a bunch of people that you know love him as much as you do. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't cry during Sobbing. that, you are a monster. Sobbing. You are a monster. <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah. You nailed it, man. If you didn't cry during that, go back to Universal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, see ya. <laughs> oh. Chris, so nice to meet you. Yeah, it's very nice to meet you too. It's so nice, nice to see you again, man. Man, you gotta come out west. We gotta All do right. the, we gotta do this in my hometown. Here we come, yeah. Disneyland. Jay's never been to DCA before. No, always go to Disneyland. I might know a thing or two about DCA if you come out. I think you do. <laughs> I think he does. World of Mike is with me right now. We did the 50th together last year. Yeah. It's, it's also our friendship anniversary. <laughs> uh, dude, what a difference a year makes, right? I, you know, it feels like yesterday, but the 35th anniversary of Epcot feels like yesterday too. Yeah. It's so weird, man. You know, I'm, I'm new to this park and I, I full on admit, I got a lot to learn and I'm excited to learn all about this park because it's amazing. Yeah. But man, just the... Uh, I'm still learning about yeah. this park. That's one of the things about Epcot. It's like, you can learn a lot, but there's still more history and more stuff you can dive into. There's a lot of layers, a lot of layers. And it was exciting to see them acknowledge that, you know? It I felt very much, Disney today. It did, it did. I have a much different feeling in my stomach at noon today than I did at noon last year, you know? And yeah. It, <laughs> it, it's like, it doesn't have to be expensive or complicated. It just needs to be... You know, I don't need smoke and mirrors. Yeah, I just want the passion, the compassion that we kind of got back in the Eisner days of the wonderful world of Disney. And heck, even back when uh, Walt Disney presents, you know, Walt could be announcing the silliest cartoon, but his warmth, his compassion, he was your uncle. 
he always had this sense of you're okay. Yep. And they kind of nailed that. Today. They did. They did. And it's hearing Walt's voice in a crowd uh, full of people that all love him like you do. It's like you know these are my people. These people get it. I'm getting chill bumps now thinking yeah. about it. <laughs> Me I had too. chills Me out there too. when Voices of Liberty were still singing and they were talking about yeah. it. It was just like. Dude, this is Walt's Park. It is, and I think that um, when you look at the hardcore fans of Magic Kingdom, yeah. they love Disney as a corporation, they love the movies, but it seems like the hardcore Epcot fan, that's a, a Disney Parks fan. Like, yeah. like it's a whole different crowd, because Adam was like, wait till you see like the Epcot hardcores. It's a different oh, yeah. crowd. Yeah, they're... And it's it's very, very true observation. Yep, I agree. I was just telling Adam earlier, Magic Kingdom to me is Roy's dedication to his brother. Yeah. This park is Walt's park. Yeah. This is, they're going to put the statue here. It makes sense. That statue, man, seeing that at D23. Oh, I, it, I saw your guys' video and I was very me. jealous. <laughs> it broke me. I was like, oh my God, this is so amazing. Yep. I wonder how many people are going to have that as their profile picture. Yeah. It'll be me. Yeah. For sure. Me I, with I, him, dude. <laughs> if they sell a mini version of it, I'm buying that yeah. thing. It's oh, like the, the Christmas partner order? statue. Yeah, it's the like Christmas a partner order? statue, dude. Oh, Pre-ordered already. Uh, <laughs> awesome but hey man what a difference a year makes yeah and i'm glad we got to do it together absolutely it's awesome happy, Boom. happy friend anniversary happy friend anniversary <laughs> oh, yeah. one year later big big difference wouldn't you say between what they did for a celebration last year at magic kingdom yes. for the 50th of walt disney World yes. versus what they celebrated here a complete 180 100 percent complete 180 i mean it was everything though when we were you know giving them a I don't want to say complain. We were critiquing last year. We said all they needed to do was acknowledge it, a little bit of wall, a little bit of nostalgia. Like literally everything that we made as a checklist, they checked off. There. They did, yeah. I think they probably learned from last year a little bit, maybe from comments, criticisms. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, things like that. Adding Walt to the fireworks show, I believe that was fan driven because you know they do they do lots of lots of surveys, and one of the things in the surveys. You know, what do you think about the celebration? I think they realized that they missed the mark and that people like the, the the merch and the food, but they also love the nostalgia. There's such a deep history, you know? And no disrespect to, to Magic Kingdom and that fandom, because yeah. I love Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World also, but the Epcot fandom runs a little deeper. Yep. And I don't know if they would have completely unacknowledged it here if that would have slid over like, <laughs> quite as well with the diehards here. Yeah. You told me that this morning. You're like, wait till you see the hardcore Epcot fan. It's a different kind of fan. And man, were you breed. right. You were so right about that. So that maybe has something to do with it also. For sure, for sure. No, it just, it felt good to see it acknowledged. It felt good to hear Walt's voice, to be around with people that love it. Like, I'm extremely happy right now. And I think about how miserable I was at this time of the first of last year. They did it. I'm proud of them. You did it. <laughs> So happy to report that the train town, the miniature train town, withstood the storm. I was worried about this little train town. Like it doesn't seem like it would take much to flood this out, right? Still here, still training. You know, friends, I always tell you that I give it to you straight. If something's great, I'll tell you it's great. If it's trash, I'll tell you it's trash. And I have to say today, Disney celebrating Epcot's 40th anniversary, it was great. 
Everything that we complained about last year at Walt Disney World's celebration for the Magic Kingdom turning 50, and I say Walt Disney World because really that's the kick off the birth of the entire resort. Last year, that was an utter and complete disappointment. That you can't stop and pause and celebrate your anniversary, your milestone, celebrate life and, and moving forward in space and time. And I always said, the celebration isn't about money. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be expensive. It just needs to be three things. Nostalgic, authentic, and acknowledged. Last year, they just didn't even acknowledge it. And merch and specialty food items, that's not acknowledging an anniversary. But this year, they absolutely crushed it. Today's performance, it had everything that I'd asked for. If I were to make a checklist of everything that was missing last year, this year, it showed up for us. There was images of Walt, there was Walt's voice, there was talking about the history, the legacy of the park. They celebrated the cast members. They had the original cast members that are still working here 40 years later. They celebrated Epcot. And this park is so beautiful my designer brain explodes every time I come here. Last year, I don't take any other excuse other than they messed up. And that's okay, people mess up. It was complicated times. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, Disney's not perfect. And it's okay to critique when things are off. But this year, I have to celebrate Disney because they nailed it today. All of the hardcore fans in that pavilion got choked up. We got goosebumps, we felt alive, we felt the magic of Disney and Walt's legacy. Everything around us is a dream made by this one, a dream by this one amazing man. And today we got to celebrate it as a community that loves Walt, loves his vision, and we get to celebrate it every time we come to the parks. Today, that was acknowledged. So like I said, I'll always tell you, if it's good, bad, awesome or sad, today was really, really great. I'm so happy that I was able to make it out here. When I left last year on the 50th, I knew that I wanted to come back and make it here for the 40th, and I made it, and I absolutely loved it. This is a new park for me. I'm, I'm learning this park. I'm falling in love with this park. Today's celebration, embrace that new love that I'm finding for Epcot. So Epcot, happy 40th. So excited to be here with you, and I hope to celebrate many more trips and anniversaries to come. Epcot, I love you. I love you so much, and I'm loving falling in love with you. Friends, thank you so much for showing up today. I want to thank everybody over at club1313.com for being here. I want to thank you for showing up and celebrating Epcot turning 40 with me. Happy anniversary, beautiful.